All right, let's start chapter five, probability and random variables. So the first couple chapters, sections will be probability and then we'll get into what a random variable is. Um, but probability is the science of chance. This is important for inferential statistics, which we really haven't done yet. Remember, inferential is taking a sample back in chapter one uh, to make estimates about a population. And yeah, maybe we've taken an average of a sample, but we haven't really made a conclusion about a population yet. Um, and the reason this is important for inferential statistics is because we need to know the chance that we will be correct um, when we make estimates on based on random samples. So even when we have a sample, we're not 100% correct because we don't know the population. So we want to figure out how likely is this true. So we need to know the chance that we're correct. And this will be kind of a problem for later, but this is why we're going to learn probability and then we'll figure out what this is. So we're just going to start with classical, uh, classical probability and notation. Um, so if we flip a coin, what's the probability of heads, right? Flipping a coin, there's two sides. So it's one out of two or 0.50. And probability is usually decimals, not percents. So some of us might have said 50%, and all of this means 50%, um, but we just use decimals for probability. Um, if we roll a balanced die, so balanced just means all the numbers are equally likely. Someone could technically have like a shady dice where like six is heavier or something to make it fall more, um, things like that. So what's the probability of a three? Um, there's one number that's a three out of six. So one divided by six is one, six, six, seven, right? Again, it's 16% or 16.67%, um, but we prefer decimal form for probability. And then people study probability of lots of things. Someone might want to know probability of the rain next Sunday, uh, which is something we can't answer right now. We need more information. So this is not a classical probability. Classical probabilities are like flipping a coin or rolling a die, right? We could find the probability of rain, but that's a bit more complicated. So the definition of classical probability um, applies to situations where each um, simple outcome is equally likely. So flipping a coin, each side was equally likely. Rolling a dice, each side was equally likely. Probability of rain, right, is not equally likely as not rain. Um, and a simple outcome, the reason I use the word simple, is something that can only occur one way. So there's only one way to get heads, there's only one way to get tails, one way to get a three, and so on. Yeah. So let's look at another example. Um, so let's, we have a jar of 884 marbles. So you can see that at the bottom as the total in our table. And we have red, white, and blue. And then each color has a frequency in the table and we're just gonna randomly draw a marble. What's the probability? So I'm going to teach you a new notation, which I'll formally define. Um, but if we want to find the probability of white, we put a big P to represent probability. And then we put white inside parentheses. And that would be read as probability of white. Probability, sorry, it's a long. Probability of white. It's kind of like functions from math, if you remember that. Uh, we just use a big P for probability. It's shorter to write. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do all the white marbles, which is 289, and we're gonna divide that by 884. And let's see what we get. 289 out of 884, and we'll leave in decimal form so we get 0 0.3269. So basically a 32% chance of white, but again, we're gonna leave as is. All right, let's try another one. Probability of not blue. 
So the total is still 884. Hopefully that makes sense. And then not blue. And cross off blue just means white or red. So we'll add the white and red together. 351 plus 289, 640. So 351 plus 289, sorry, that was red is 359, right? We're just adding the colors that aren't blue. So there's 640 that are not blue because we took away the 244. And then we'll do 640 over 884 and we get 0.72398, which goes up to 7240. So 72% chance that it's not blue. All right, and then what's the probability of purple? P of purple. Uh, there are no purple marbles, so the probability would be zero. No chance. All right, let's just define probability, and then we'll, um, yeah, take a break. Um, so the probability of an event um, will be P of E, so whatever that event is, we'll put it in the parentheses, and it'll be F over N. So we just did this. F is the frequency. Um, or the number of ways the event can occur. Right? Also known as frequency. So we use the frequency on top, right? Yeah, sorry. 289 was the frequency. 640 was the frequency of not blue. And then capital N is the total number um, of possible simple outcomes. So basically just the total. So we divide by that. And that was the 884. And then we're really not doing anything new. We're using new words, but probability is actually the exact same thing as the population relative frequency. So it's assuming we have relative frequency for the whole population. So we already know how to do relative frequency. Um, probability is really the same exact concept. And then the last note before we jump to the next video is that probability is always between zero and one. Inclusive just means zero and one are included. And that just means zero to 100%. All right, you can maybe hear my dog shaking in the background. So I think it's time to take a break. I'll see you back for the next video.